Good afternoon. Those are two tough talkers to follow up. I'm looking at the time here. So what do I got? About 15 minutes? Okay. So I'll, I'll move along pretty quickly here. My talk is going to um, is going to focus a little bit um, on some of the more academic reasons why uh, we focus on ITOT convergence. Um, so in what seems to be uh, another lifetime to me, um, I, I formally spent 10 years in the IT space before I moved on to Schneider Electric and I started working in the OT space. Um, it's at that time actually that I met my wife um, who had spent her whole career in IT. So I bring a whole new meaning to the, 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 the phrase ITOT convergence. Yes, you can insert your, uh, your Mars and Venus jokes here. So, um, I had Perfect. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what the market drivers are for ITOT convergence. We'll talk about some of the guiding principles uh, that, that are driving ITOT convergence. And then the value and how we can get to that value. So the market drivers. What's behind the desire, the need to converge ITOT? Well, there's a few things. There's many things, actually. I'm just going to pick on a couple of them here. Um, critical infrastructure. So many of us in here work in critical infrastructure. Um, you know, the, the interconnected industrial business that's cyber resilient. One of the most complex, this is one of the most complex and critical problems of industry today. U.S. Policy Directive 21 from President Obama. Um, states that the energy and communication infrastructures are two of the most critical infrastructures in the world today. Actually, it lists at least the, the, the policy directive lists at least 16 different sectors, but these are two that, that all the other infrastructures rely on. At the same time, IoT and, 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 uh, and IIoT dominate conversations. We've heard it all week um, talk about IoT and IIoT and what it means to us. Things connected to things, producing new opportunities. We saw some great examples um, from, from Jeff and Hugh here about how they're using connectedness to drive their businesses. The speed of industrial business continues to increase. Uh, with opportunities, this is newly invigorated connectedness brings things like IIoT. We must now react faster in a safe and secure manner. It's at the edge of this faster pace that the cultural differences between IT professionals and OT professionals can emerge. Technology, we knew that technology would be part of this conversation, of course, but we've, we've seen it a couple of times today already. Technology will continue to drive this new, new and unique opportunity. So we all know about Moore's Law, we've heard about it you know, all of our careers. Generalized today, it's the observation that the rate of computational power in an integrated circuit doubles every two years. It actually still continues in a different form, but, but uh, that's a, a generalized form. Now Metcalf's Law, Metcalf's Law, maybe we're not quite as familiar with, but this is the value of a network. Th this states that the value of a network is the square of its connections. So where do we know about this? Where do we hear about Metcalf's Law? This is the community value of a network. Of the value of a network grows as the square of number of its users increases. So we see this. Uh, we see this in Facebook as an incredibly valuable network. Um, we see it in LinkedIn. Moore's Law used in conjunction with Metcalf's Law can be used to explain the apparently never-ending wave of, of uh, information technology coming towards us. As these, as these laws continue to play out, so does the, the technology that drives towards us. I should have mentioned that it's also, you know, coupled that computational power with the analytics, we see big data as, as, a, as a major player in the need, need to drive these forces. Okay, so four ideas, actually three ideas and a measurement. Technology enables new opportunities. So what you see here is a comparison of of uh, an actual plant compared to the ISA 95 model. As, as I'm sure many of you have, I cut my teeth on the ISA 95 model. This isn't to say that the ISA 95 model is wrong. ISA 95 model is, is absolutely proven to be um, very useful and clearly it's not incorrect. But what we're finding is as, as plants optimize themselves, 
perhaps ISA 95 model doesn't exactly match. So if you take like a simple example, um, uh, the pace of an upgrade and evolution in the IT world can overwhelm the OT world. What's available today are enterprise IT principles applied to OT space. Patch management in the enter enterprise IT space, as a simple example, um, is a relatively straightforward task. We all have our own devices, we all patch them. Um, you know, in, in the IT space, this is a regular occurrence. In the OT space, this is a disruptive action. I, I think I heard um, a couple of references to not bumping your process, to not driving your process into the ground. Um, you know, trust me, we understand, we hear. I mean, this is one of those things that in the IT space, this is, this is very straightforward, but in the OT space, it doesn't quite match. Um, these barriers are coming down though. Patch servers are now available, patch services are available, online upgrade is now feasible, um, and within reach, online upgrade of a running plant <laughs> was talked about here today, that was great. I was skipping that slide, a period. Um, so control extended to the management domain. Um, let's keep a simple equation in mind. Materials plus equipment plus energy plus instruction equals finished product. It's just a simple equation. This is your profit, your profit equation. You put these things in and if you're running a proper business, you're gonna get profit out. business management side though, the business management side, the, the side where the IT side of the business exists, the, decision to make, the decisions they make typically are on the daily, weekly, monthly. They're driven by finances, they're, they're fairly transactional. And it's too late often in a real-time plant to look towards the, the, the operational side and try to make a change. So what do we do? So on the operation side, um, the decision, decision making to impact the results is more real time. This is where the real time decisions are made on running the plant, but perhaps they're not as aware back at that equation of the finished product profitability. Are they consuming materials at a proper rate? Can you adjust those material, the material consumption? Ultimately, I, IT and OT are working for the same cause, of course. And uh, it's that reliability of the system to continue to perform its job. They're both working towards the profitability of, of their organization. However, with IT and OT, cultures differ. They differ, they're, they're, they differ in mission, and um, they differ in how they see the business. talk a little bit about the increasing speed of the business. So we saw some really good examples of, of making some, some, some business level decisions, improving, uh, how they're improving the, the operations of the plant. So in the 90s, we were about profit management. We were about maintenance of, maintenance of the plant. We were about environmental impact and environmental management. That was at that transactional IT level. And down at control level, the real-time level, what we knew was safety control, what we knew was process control. But as we're moving towards the future here, it's enterprise resource planning and reporting at that, that transactional level. So planning for the future, scaling up uh, plants, scaling up resources, scaling up people, scaling up skills and equipment. And in the real-time, what we're looking to control is profit, reliability, environmental risk, safety, Security, cybersecurity is an important thing that we need to, to control in real time in the world that we live in now. So the problem is, as we, as we can see in this picture here, see if I have laser working. You know, on the operational side, we know we have the enterprise management reaching through production, real time control. We know we have a, a pretty good loop going here. But what the problem is, is on the, on the CIO side, on the business side, trying to make decisions about what's going on in the real time side, there's, they have the financial reporting connection, but there's this measurement back, there's this gap here. This is where we've seen some excellent examples of, of, of how you're solving that problem. Hugh, I thought that was excellent. I'm impressed. So what's the solution? The solution, obviously, 
is to close that vacuum, is, is to bring real-time accounting to, to the rest of the business, to, to let the rest of the business participate in what's going on in the, on the operation side of the business. I have all these notes and I want to make sure I miss anything. <laughs> so back to that equation that, that we talked about a little bit ago. Sorry, I, was, I removed this slide too. Um, that equation I talked about a minute ago, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's about the energy coming in, the materials coming in, going into your plant, um, running through your process and getting production value out. But as we, as we look at this graphically, now we're trying to bring the business measurement in there. So KPIs, the ability to measure what's going on with your business and um, empowering the process to make, make some of these decisions at the business level, empowering the business to make decisions about what's going on on the operation side. It's really about connecting these two sides of the business, driving them together so that you can drive, you, you can go back real quick here, you can go back too far. So we can drive, drive those aspects of the business, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep going all the way back, but drive those aspects of the business around, around safety, around cybersecurity, around profitability, around reliability. Allow that business side to participate in those decisions. In the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip along here. Um, okay, so on the value delivered, so what do we have? We have the, the objectives of the business is to improve our operational profitability, improve our efficiency, improve our reliability. They're constrained by, by things that they need to control, environmental risk. They're constrained by safety risk. These are prerequisites for the operation. And then they're constrained by security risks, a reality of, of the, the world that we live in today. Measurable business value, value improvement. So real-time profitability control, these are the things that we're trying to, to, to uh, improve upon. Um, real-time safety and environmental risk, these are, the, these are the controls that this convergence is going to, to help us improve upon. And then real-time reliability. Hmm. We lost a slide here. Do we, do we change the slide decks? Because it seems like to be, no, okay. Okay, so what can we do today? Um, we can acknowledge that there's differences in our missions. We can leverage people, process, and technology. We can eliminate the silos in the business. By acknowledging that there's a difference in, in the, the common mission, the finished products, the services, identify that, that IT sees the whole business, OT sees the operational side of the business. Identify, understand that, that the mission from an IT standpoint is confidentiality, integrity, availability. This is a, a cybersecurity term we talk about um, that, that refers, that's referred to often as CIA, whereas the OT side of the business cares about, they care about the, the, the availability of the system before they care about confidentiality. They care about integrity, they care about confidentiality, but it's primarily they care about the availability of the system. Leveraging, uh, leveraging people. Convergence is forcing, out of, forcing us out of our silos to find better ways to partner, to share data, to partner with other users and other parts of the business. Even sharing physical networks. Whew. I don't want to plug a cable in that old that nest that you have there, Hugh. This is a new paradigm. From tightly controlled silos we've grown used to, to engagement across the business with common goals. How do we get these silos of people to work together to interoperate? We use the cementing infrastructures like, like standards, architectures, common cybersecurity solutions, um, and common interoperable technology. These are the things that, that IT brings to OT and OT can teach IT about. And that's it. And since it seems like I lost a little bit of my slides here, I just want to thank Mentor Graphics for uh, supporting me here. Um, you know, one of the things that we, that we do is uh, um, 
we use we use uh, the Metro Graphics Nucleus operating system and a number of our devices. So we talked about RTUs, we talked about PLCs, and and it's it's enabling technologies like what, what Metro Graphics produces here that uh, um, really are taking us taking us forward in this convergence. They're creating this this technology that is that is desirable in all, in all parts of the business and and really helping enable this convergence. So, thank you.